My name is JC McCauley. I'm Naisha McCauley, and, and you're, you're watching, watching AccessTV.org. Welcome back to Change Talk Wednesday, a part of the Rivers Women's Initiative. I am so glad to be back with you on this year. Last year we talked about everything from domestic violence down to how to apply your makeup. And this year we're diving a little deeper into some of those subjects that are essential and touch home for women. Uh, so it's been a while since you've seen me and I'm glad to be back with you. Uh, the reason why you haven't seen me is I've been working on something very special. I've been working on growing a new human being. <laughs> so this year, while many people uh, throughout our nation and throughout the world were really creating their New Year's resolution, I took a season to reflect and figure out what it is that means most to me personally, as I hope you did the same. And it has become a very big American tradition for people to come up with New Year's resolutions, but somewhere along the line, I realized that the resolution would not be enough this year. I had at first resolved in my mind that I wanted to commit to becoming a great mother and uh, becoming a better wife. And then I realized that that resolution was good in concept, but it needed more of a foundation. It needed to lie in something deeper, something more fundamental. It needed to come out of and stem from an actual vision. When we look at the word resolution, everybody has at some point made one in their life. Maybe not at New Year's, maybe yours was just at different crossing points in your life. But a resolution is nothing more than a resolve or a firm belief or a, a moment of decision where we decide to do something or not to do something. This year, you may have made a resolve to lose those extra 15 pounds or to eat a healthier diet or to go to church more often or commit to your tenets of faith or be a better participant in your family. And all of those things are excellent resolves, but they have to fit somewhere in a greater vision. Today for Change Talk Wednesday, I wanted to talk to you from the subject of vision over resolution. A resolution, while it is a beautiful thing, and while it usually comes from good intention, can be nothing more than a foundation. A resolution is kind of like the, uh, the brick and mortar to a greater image, a greater emphasis that you're trying to build. Um, when it comes down to how we move forward in life, resolutions don't have steps really described in them. They don't really have much of an execution plan or too much of a strategy. It's just a, a good idea that we've decided that we want to pursue. But that vision has to have more to it. It has to have added components. So this year we are challenged to do more than just have a resolve. We're challenged to add to our resolve and subtract from our resistance. To every resolution, according to Forbes magazine, the University of Scra uh, Scranton did a study and it showed that 40% of Americans commit themselves to a New Year's resolution at the beginning of the year. And tragically, only 8% actually accomplished that resolution. Why is that? Somewhere along the line, we forget that there has to be some addition and some subtraction. The addition to our resolution has to be those steps, those strategies, and the incorporation of that resolve into a greater vision. And the subtraction to that resolution has to be the subtraction of our resistance. I don't know about you, but I remember um, back uh, a while ago when I was in college, I had made a resolve to do a lot better in my studies. We're not going to say what my grades were. We're just going to say they weren't up to par where I wanted them to be. And I had resolved that I was going to get an A in biology. With that resolve, I moved into my year confident that I had the ability, the skill set to do so and to execute. 
But what I didn't do, what I failed to do, was to change my strategy. The resolution was beautiful, it was a good thing, well thought, but the strategy remained the same. I didn't change any of my study habits. I went to class on time, left on time, but committed nothing extra. I probably didn't do as good as I could have done as far as collaborating with partners on homework and things like that. And overall, I made no extra effort. I think a great psychologist once said that insanity is our ability to do the same thing over and over and over again and expect new results. Don't let your resolution this year become insanity. Work toward a greater vision. Add to it the strategy that's necessary in order for you to accomplish that great thing that you wanna do. And don't make it too complicated for yourself. The University of Scranton realized in its study that most of the time when people didn't accomplish their New Year's resolution, that goal that they had set out deep within their heart, it was because they had came up with some illustrious new thing that they wanted to adjust in their life all together in one shot. And I'm sorry, but as humans, we just don't work like that. As human beings, we are slower evolvers. We adjust to what's going on around us, adjust to the demands of our environment, and adjust to our own personal demands at a much slower pace. So this year, give yourself the chance to develop and evolve into that resolution. Don't look for a major turnaround in one shot. Don't turn to, to diet pills and other drastic, crazy measures trying to adjust something about yourself that developed over time. Make a commitment of time to your adjustment and to your change. Stick with me here at Change Talk Wednesday and we'll follow up this thought talking more about the things that we need to subtract from our resistance. Stick with us here, Change Talk Wednesday. So we're entering into a wonderful math problem, and you only need basic skills for this one, addition and subtraction. We talked about the things that we need to add to our resolution. It needs to have context. It needs to be a part of a greater vision. But let's talk about what has to be subtracted. To every great resolve, there is an even greater resistance. And oftentimes when we think of resistance, we think of outside forces. We think of someone on the outside that's distracting us or presenting these obstacles. We think of the environment around us and limited resources and how that affects our ability to execute what we've decided we want to do. But I'm here to tell you, oftentimes the greatest resistance is coming from within. That's right. It's the art of self-sabotage. The same person that masterminds this great plan for you to execute to become the better you is the same person that diabolically at the same time is developing strategies and little, little measures to distract you, to present a resistance to the very thing that you desire to do. Why is it like that? Because there's a part of us as human beings that as we push forward in a vision, a part of us says, yes, you could do it, champ. You can do anything. And then a part of us is confronted by that little not angel, that little demon that sits on our shoulder and says, you don't have the ability to do that. There's no way that you can accomplish that. You've never been that kind of person. No one in your family has ever tried it that way before. You have a track record of doing it this way. Why change? There's constantly this voice that speaks in the back of our head and says, why change? What are the benefits? What are the proven benefits to change? 
And the honest truth is, for most of us that have decided to make these changes in our life, we don't know what those benefits are quite yet. Because a resolution doesn't tell us the whole picture. So our challenge this morning is to not just look at how we're going to subtract from that resistance, but first figure out how does that resolution fit into the overall vision for our lives. Some of us are parents or becoming parents like myself. A lot of us are professionals. A lot of us have other creative talents, visions, dreams, things that we participate in. Some of us are excellent uh, members at our churches, at different clubs that we participate in. And these things are all components of who we are. But in order to really execute your resolution this year, you're going to have to take a panoramic, a panoramic screenshot of your life and figure out what is the vision, the mission, the goal for the being that you are in this earth. What is it that you're committing to? What is it that you're destined to be a part of? What are those elements that only you can contribute? And now, how does your resolution fit into that greater picture? If my resolution this year is to become a greater mother, I realized I had to first start thinking about how to become a greater human being because the mother wasn't a person outside of who I am. She doesn't stand on her own. She's a part of Melinda altogether. And it would take a concentration, a focus, to say, okay, as an individual, these are some of the elements that I need to adjust, improve, and let go. Adjust, improve, and let go. When it comes down to my temper as a parent, I want to be able to have patience. But the truth is, patience is needed in all areas and arenas of my life. And the same patience that I execute as a professional, I want to be able to convert that, translate that into my, pers my more personal settings. That's an example for me. But for you, what is it? What is that greater vision for your life that now this resolution has to fit into? And how will you quiet the resistance? In the Bible, there's mention of a woman, and her name is Hannah in the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel. And we see that Hannah was the wife of a great man. And that man had two wives, Hannah and Penina. And Hannah had a vision for herself. She had a vision that she could play a major role in her family that she could give the husband that she loved so dearly a son, and a son that she would commit unto God. And while she had that resolution, she also had Penina. Penina was the person constantly in her ear telling her, you can't do that. You're nothing. The Lord has shut up your womb. There's nothing good that can come from you. And though you find favor with our husband, trust me, you're never going to be able to give him an heir. Look at the children that I was able to give him. I gave him sons and daughters. You, my dear, there's no way that you'll be able to pull this off. And year after year, Hannah was confronted with this resistance. But she had a vision for herself. And because she had a vision for herself, she had a resolve that she would commit to herself, to the Lord, at the same time, every year, and bring this petition before him. That resolve sat in the midst of a greater vision that she had for herself. And while Penina was constantly this antagonist in the background, she couldn't allow that voice to speak to her within her own mind, within her own conscience as she was developing a plan for herself. She had to silence the Peninas within. That's right, we're challenged when we have a vision for ourselves to silence the Peninas within, silence those voices that tell us we can't make it, we can't do it, and we don't have the resources. Silence those voices that tell us it's never been done that way before, and why bother trying? Silence the you that is your antagonist. Silence the resistance that rises up from within so that you can push forward in your resolution and in your overall vision. My last thoughts towards this is it's time for us to realize that no vision, no resolution, no matter how beautiful or wonderful it is, is executed on its own. This year, you're challenged more than to just think big. 
You're challenged to do more than just think big. You're challenged to find your MVPs. You're challenged to find my vision players. Who are my vision players? When it comes down to what it is I need to do in life, what I've desired to accomplish for this year, who are those people that I need to be connected to to execute this plan beautifully? Sometimes we don't know who those people are yet. Sometimes we have nothing but a job description for them, but not an individual to fill it yet. But it's time for us to be more thoughtful about how we engage people. Last year was an excellent year as far as setting a foundation for relationships, but this is a year for really developing those relationships so you can find out who your MVPs are. Who are those people that are willing to devote part of their vision to your vision? Who are those people that are complemented by the passions that brew in your heart and the ideas that stem from your being? Who are those people who are willing to participate in your vision? Stick with us here at Change Talk Wednesday as we sum up our ideas on vision over resolution. Friends, it has been more than my pleasure to sit down today and just catch up with you for the new year. If you want to discuss more about your vision and your resolution with me or just touch base with me face to face, you can meet me tonight at Urban Hope Refuge, which is located at 136 Westland Street, tonight at 7 p.m. Or reach out to me via Facebook or Gmail at belivingwater at gmail.com or belivingwater on Facebook. As we continue to push forward with our mission to clarify our resolution and to really solidify our vision, on next week we'll be bringing forward a visionary that's working in the area of women edification. Um, her name is Althea Weber Bates, and we look forward to interviewing her to see what's going on with the resiliency movement and an upcoming, a very innovative idea, an upcoming and exciting baggage claim tour. So we hope that you've enjoyed our program today and that you will continue to stick with us throughout this season here at Change Talk Wednesday. Until next time, we continue to promote positive thinking and powerful living.